Hi, my name is Eric Skoglin. I'm the director of speech and debate at Olathe Northwest High School in Kansas. And first of all, I want to thank you so much for giving your time to our community as a volunteer judge for our forensic students. Our students work really hard on their performances and their different events, and we cannot have tournaments without many volunteers just like you. So first of all, thank you. This video should help explain some of the ins and outs of judging at a forensics invitational. I've tried to keep the material fairly generic, but the coach who sent you this video may have specific instructions that either add on to or differ slightly from what I'm about to describe to you here. As an overview of the experience, Usually the week of the tournament, if not before, you should get a confirmation from the tournament which will give you details about when they want you to show up, where you should go, and where different tournament locations are located. When you arrive, you should check in at the judge table, which will be located usually somewhere in a prominent hallway in the school. At that table, they will either hand you a ballot or a schedule of your day, or they may direct you to wait in the hospitality room while they get their stuff together. Once you have a ballot, you will go to a round, judge that round and complete the ballot or ballots, depending on how the tournament is organized, and then you'll return those ballots to tournament staff. Sometimes this occurs back at the judge table where you checked in. Some tournaments will have a different location for that. We do have a hospitality room where you can enjoy food and drink before and after the rounds that you judge. Occasionally, a judge will be placed on standby just by virtue of the fact that a tournament has recruited a slightly different number of judges than was needed, and you were randomly selected to take a round off. That's usually where you would hang out in the event that you are a standby judge. When you check in, you will receive either a ballot or some kind of a way to know what room you are going to. That will give you instructions as to where your round is taking place and what time the round is taking place. As I mentioned, some judges will be placed on standby. This is usually a random occurrence. It does not mean that the tournament has judged you to be a less qualified judge, and it's certainly not intended to be disrespectful of you and the time that you are giving to our tournament. We do ask that judges try to be in the location five minutes before the scheduled start time, if it's at all possible. And this is usually not a major in issue in forensics tournaments, but try to avoid doing a whole lot of remodeling of the classroom you find yourself in. Tournaments will have a staff of students that have to reset all of those rooms at the end of the day. And so anything you can do to help keep that job minimal is really beneficial. One very important note is that you should never unplug anything in a classroom or whatever room you find yourself judging in. A round in forensics is a sequence of performers that you will see in some order. There will be a number of competitors assigned to your room. Usually that number is between five and eight, but some tournaments may vary slightly depending on what's going on there. If you are judging extemporaneous speaking, you can expect that students will perform in the order listed on their ballot. However, in other events, Students might perform in an order different than the order you have on your ballot or schedule that you've been given. Many tournaments will give you a master ballot where you would record your rankings of each performer. You will certainly be ranking your performances from one to however many are in the room. Those rankings may not be duplicated. One student will earn the one, one student will earn the two, and so on. Some tournaments will use a system called quality points to ask you to provide a more subjective comparison of the different performers that you saw. Each performer should hand you a ballot that they have filled in some information on that will go back to that student at the end of the tournament. This is where you can provide more detailed comments for that student to help them improve. It's important that when you're judging around, you not leave the room until you've seen everyone that you are supposed to see. Now there are occasionally changes to a schedule. Sometimes students don't show up. Sometimes someone shows up that morning that we weren't expecting. We would have tournament staff communicating that to you ideally, but unless you've heard otherwise, you should expect to see everyone that's on your ballot or your schedule, and you shouldn't leave your room until either you've seen everyone or the round time is over. I do want to make sure that you're aware 
Sometimes you won't see all of your performances right in a row. There may sometimes be a gap between performances. At most tournaments, students have an hour and a half to perform all of the events that they're entered into. And so sometimes through no fault of their own, they might get to you a little bit later, even though you had some downtime in the middle. Please don't penalize any competitors who provide you with that gap of extra thinking time. Our High School Activities Association in Kansas does not officially allow the judge to keep time, but there are tournaments where that rule is waived or changed and they might allow or require you to keep time for the performances. This shouldn't be a source of stress for you, but you may want to check with your host to make sure that you're following the appropriate rules for that weekend's tournament. Now, most of what I've just said applies if you are judging on Saturday. If you're judging for a tournament on a Friday night, there are some different procedures that we'll get into when we talk about the individual events that you might find yourself judging. One of the most important services you provide to us and to the students this weekend is the comments that you provide to our students. These are a great learning opportunity because unlike in many other activities, your coaches don't see the final outcome, the performance that is given to the judges. So we learn about what our students are doing and our students learn about what they're doing through those comments. When you're giving comments, it is important that you try to give some positive feedback. However, it can be very frustrating to a student to only see positive comments, but be ranked as the sixth or seventh performer in a round. So please try also to include some opportunities for how that student could improve their performance for subsequent tournaments. We always ask that you please try to limit your comments to the performance that you saw and avoid bringing in outside opinions that may or may not be relevant to the quality of the work that the student has put in. Some good examples of very helpful feedback. You can talk about the presentation quality which can include things such as, did the student use appropriate levels of eye contact for the performance that they were giving? How was their poise? Were, were they clear? Could you hear them? Was the timing appropriate? Was their volume appropriate for the room and for the audience? You can also, of course, provide feedback on the substance of their performance. If it's a speaking event, are those speeches organized well? Did you find the argumentation compelling and logical? If it's an interpretation event, were the characters clearly distinguished? Was the blocking, which is our theatrical term for moving around the stage, was it well crafted? Did the plot make sense? Could you tell the clear story? What did you see in the performance that you liked and did not like? It's always important for us as judges to check ourselves to make sure that we are giving feedback that we would give to any student regardless of their gender or racial background or other groups that students may find themselves in. Particular comments to consider would be comments about the pitch of a student's voice, whether or not you find the humor appropriate coming from that particular student, and one that I really want to highlight is the selection of literature or the topic that the student has brought to you. Many of our students use forensics as an opportunity to tell a story about their lives, a story that they understand. So it can be just absolutely gutting to tell a student that you're just tired of hearing, you know, black students perform a black piece. Please do not make those kinds of comments. Other feedback that you should try and avoid Please do not give any feedback, either positive or negative, about the attire or appearance. It's not that we don't want our students to look professional, but in written form, from an adult who a student has never seen before, it is very easy to misconstrue those comments. So please try to evaluate the quality of the performance. I say argumentation because I copied this from a debate presentation, but not necessarily argumentation. Try to evaluate the quality of the performance first. If you do have a concern about the attire that a student has that you would like that coach to know about, it's usually best to communicate with tournament staff and then we'll talk to that coach and make them aware that there is a concern that they can then address. Hopefully they have a better relationship with the student than you would having just sat in the room with them for up to 10 minutes. You should also generally avoid comments that are outside of students' control to resolve. If you are giving students an opportunity to improve, ask yourself, is this something I can reasonably expect that the student could improve? Is this something that they could change? Or is it something that they couldn't really control?
It's important though that you know, judges do not have any requirements for prior qualifications, for any pre-knowledge of the events. By watching this video, you are already in the upper half of judges as far as the knowledge that you're going to bring to the round. So just realize, the ballot just asks you to rank the competitors according to which performances you preferred. You define what that means. And I can promise you, students and coaches should not be coming to you to confront you after the round. Oh, why did you give me the five? That won't happen. Your decision is final and Kansas has strict rules prohibiting students and coaches from confronting you about the decisions that you made. Once again, thank you so much for judging. There's another video that may be attached to this one, which will go through a little more detail about the different events you may find yourself judging.